Five things are what the hero talents need to make sure they don't turn into another Covenant system or Azerite armor. The player base has already raised concerns about the entire design and philosophy behind them, so much so that the devs are actually reworking the most controversial one. Is it too early to draw conclusions about how all of this will play out? Or is this the perfect time to give feedback so that there will be time for these to be fixed? Well, to answer probably all of these questions right away, it's enough to say that the Oracle hero talents have been completely taken back to the drawing board after they have received massive feedback about the design philosophy and implementation. Oracle Priest has issues, or rather had issues, if we are to assume those will be fixed. But we don't know what the rework means yet. They could just as well tweak some numbers or replace some mechanics. They could of course scrap it all and come up with a whole new thing time will tell. But for this topic, we will still use Oracle as an example for certain points, with everything in mind of course, because of two main things. One, the devs clearly want to expand the concept of a support spec to other classes, and two, the issues presented in Oracle are not unique to this particular set of hero talents, and it might not be unique considering there are still 31 still left to be announced. For an expansion that's <laughs> to release this summer, early fall? Oof. Don't know about you, but looking at the calendar and how slow they've put just these eight out, I'm feeling kind of BFA, as right armor doesn't have enough time to change before the expansion comes out, kind of a vibe. Hey, psst, flame here, from the future. We have recorded this video essentially before the eight new talents have been announced, so here's a little bit of a tidbit. The eight new hero talents doesn't really change the topic of this video and the purpose of this video because the concerns are kind of still there. First of all, we still don't know what the new shaman hero talents are to consider that the potential support issues that Oracle has can extend to shaman as well, so that's still on the fence. However, some of the prevalent particular issues or things that we address that we think should be changed or should be addressed in a different way coming to our within are still present in the new talent trees. One such example would be the emphasis on you having specific talents selected to be able to benefit from these hero talents. They have also specified very publicly this time concerning their philosophy on the new talent trees and on the new hero talent trees and where they're supposed to be going. It looks like they want to pick certain talents to be selected always which is controversial because it takes away choices away from players and that's not really fun. It never is fun to take away choices. I don't know exactly why they think this is a good idea. They might probably have a very good reason. I hope it's not just some arbitrary friction that they think players would enjoy because it's never fun to not have enough choices because we already don't have enough choices with a hero talent system to begin with since you get just get all. You don't really have choices. And some of the choice notes, as we mentioned further into this video, are not real choices because one of them either doesn't work in raids or doesn't work in dungeons or is just vastly, vastly inferior. And there are some rogue trickster issues with Faint being the core focus of the hero talents while Faint is a defensive. Rogues don't feel great about using Vanish offensively as of now, considering that Vanish has so many implications defensively and still uh, they do this. So it's very likely that a lot of these hero talents will change in the future, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Don't pick your pitchforks up yet. We are aware that they're very open for feedback, but that is the purpose of this video, to give them our perspective. It could be wrong. It could be wrong what we're saying, listen, but this is the point of bringing it up to the public forum and have it judged by you. Now go enjoy the rest of the video. We need more support classes. I know, I know, Augmentation hasn't really released a stellar reception. And once again, I do have to point out that one, we never really had a support spec before outside the Accidental Paladin class in Vanilla WoW, also known as the Buff the Entire Raid for the Whole Night class. And two, WoW needs new things for players to engage with, and a support spec is one of them. Now, likely the biggest issue was that there is currently only one support spec, period. If all classes had a version of it, or at least a few more classes, classes did, then we might be looking at a totally different game. Also, the issue could be fixed if the support role was not in the DPS category. Some parts of the issue are the fact that augmentation is actually a DPS that provides a lot more DPS by providing more DPS to your DPS. Ironically, the bigger strengths that it has is through its utility. 
double dispels, armor and defensives, buffs for your party and so on. Which is also ironically funny because it literally fills the holes of what other specs would want to have as their own party raid utility, have been asking for for a long time when it comes to dungeon tools to deal with affixes and so on. Maybe the biggest lessons to be learned from augmentation is what happens when you make a spec that has the tools that people keep asking for their own specs to get for years. Well, that spec in question gets to become meta in an overwhelming way. Funny how that works, huh? Almost like the players asking for Resto Shamans to have a raid buff or hunters to provide unique and meaningful utility to their M plus group to know their stuff. And when you add that to one spec and see it everywhere, it shouldn't be surprising anymore. The concept of a support class can be unpacked more and more from the perspective of its design philosophy, but it would be easier to have it figured out if we had more. And that's what likely Oracle was set out to do. Probably Lightsmith as well. It's a flavor of support in the hands of a healer this time. It won't be a new spec that pushes other healers out of the content to make room for it, since it will be a hero talent. That might be what we need on paper, but paper is not what where our WoW gameplay starts or ends. The implementation of Oracle clearly had a lot of people in arms with its initial design. With the current philosophy of support classes, players aren't exactly keen on having more. But that might not be as bad if it weren't for the fact that the whole support system of Oracle is designed around power infusion. I can't remember a single iteration of it, patch or raid tier that had players see it in a positive light, making it all the weirder to have it as an actual hero talent tree core mechanic. We already made a video that went into the apparent disconnect that this design has from the actual players playing the game, so won't touch on the how come the devs don't know this yet bit. But it is a concern since people speculated Priest to be the next in line at the support cafeteria, followed closely by Shaman, which we know nothing about yet. We could speculate that the totemic hero talents could very well be focused on support, considering almost all of Shaman's utility and support spells revolve around totems. Saying that a totemic shaman will be the support version of the class is very plausible. This is all the more necessary to point out the failings with Oracle, which we did so that things can change, which they will, in the hopes that other potential versions of support can come to the game and not just leave it all for augmentation for a full expansion again. Totemic could be one such example, Master of Harmony maybe another and so on. If we will have to have supports in the game, I believe we need more than just augmentation. After revealing Keeper of the Grove at BlizzCon, we noticed that the entire tree was focused on trees, pun intended. What this means is that to be a Keeper of the Grove Druid and not put talents into Force of Nature or Grove Tenders implies you actually have no hero talent. Is that bad? Well, only if those talents remain as talents, or at the very least remain as talents that you can skip. As such, this has to change the current design of specs, where whatever talents they want to design the actual hero talents around, cannot be talents we will be forced into. Balance hasn't played Force of Nature since Battle for Azeroth, maybe slightly in Shadowlands. Putting them right in center all of a sudden feels weird, feels forced, feels once again disconnected to how Balanced Druid is played, at least in Dragonflight. Granted, Grove Tenders are a new addition to Resto Druid, so they can have a pass there. But Force of Nature and the aforementioned Grove Tenders have to either become baseline or be repositioned on their respective talent tree in a way where players cannot skip them, meaning they will still be baseline, just that it will take a talent point. And this is a common problem for almost all trees so far. Oracle needs to have Power Infusion selected. You are unlikely to ever play Priest without Power Infusion, but that doesn't make it any better. Frost, Fire Mages need to talent into Meteor and Comet Storm respectively to benefit from some of the hero talents. For Mountain Thanes, Storm Bolt and Storm Shields require for Storm Bolt and Intervene to be talented into. Intervene has never been picked in Dragonflight to my knowledge, since the design of the Warrior Class 3 gives you an incredible low number of choices that to take Intervene you would be giving up either survivability, mobility, crowd control or damage, none of these is stuff that you want to give up to on a tank that's probably at the bottom of the meta at the moment. This has never been a choice people love to make with any trees beforehand and it won't make warriors happy to give up Rallying Cry, the most likelihood of all, for Intervene, with Rallying Cry being their only real group utility kit. Although we mentioned the issue with contradictory playstyles by using hero talents, we need to address this again since this has the potential to make the most amount of mess. Dark Ranger is a good example for this, but Lightsmith has similar issues. 
Black Arrow and its subsequent buffers work towards giving you resets of aim shot and barb shot, depending on what spec you are in. Either the dot itself gives you more of these casts, or hitting affected targets with kill shot gives you more of these casts, changing your rotation as a byproduct, and you don't really want more of these casts. The way Black Arrow is designed as a marksman, you want to cast it at the end of your true shot window, since during true shot, you will likely never be able to cast all of your aim shots at half time for the extra one the Black Arrow would proc. Maybe only by ignoring precise shots, and maybe not even then with enough gear. So then you ignore one core mechanic of your spec in favor of the other, and you will end up picking the one a spec guide or a sim will tell you to pick since it's clearly not obvious. Similar issues with barb shot for BM hunters which already have so many other talents that give them more barb shots. This is just some of the contradictory issues with playstyles that the hero talents bring. These of course need to be addressed for Dark Ranger and future hero talents yet to be announced since it will only serve to create needless friction and annoyance with the player and really WoW cannot afford that luxury right now. When the hero talents were announced at BlizzCon, the devs mentioned in a way to imply that there won't be bad feelings about not getting specific hero talents because you will get all. There are 11 nodes in total and as you level up you will get 11 points to spend or 10 points and one node is automatically unlocked or something but essentially you will have all okay uh, so there is no choice there is no customization or any way to personalize these for our own playstyle I think you might be missing the mark here chief the idea of an RPG MMO or otherwise is to progress your character and build it making meaningful choices the only real choice is whether you pick hero talent tree A or hero talent tree B. People will pick whichever sims more, meaning they might as well just import a talent code from Wowhead again and call it a day, since they don't have a real choice. Because let's be honest, if Dark Ranger does more damage than Sentinel, you will not play Sentinel unless you really like and want the flavor of Sentinel for yourself. But so far, the hero talents are flavor mostly in name. This could also have a bit to do with the fact that we haven't tested them in game, but I'll go deeper into that in my last point. However, the issue of a lack of choice still remains. The current hero talents all have a few choice nodes to select between, but the majority of them have been obviously one-sided, either because of the expected power value, or the fact that some just don't work in either raids or dungeons, making it even less of a choice of what to pick. So in the end, these are even worse than talent since you get 10 talent points, but the devs are telling you where to put them. Maybe if all the nodes or all but one or two would be choice nodes with actual choices that impact the gameplay, maybe that could solve the issue. Since making 5 or more nodes to choose from and only having 10 points would just make hero talents into regular talents, but with a fancy name and in the middle of your screen. Lastly, I believe Bellilar had a chat about whether the talents are supposed to be class skins or should have been class skins or have to be class skins or something like that. Now, the talents being pure cosmetics is something I am not in favor of. With a new expansion, we need our characters to gain something more in terms of power progression. But the hero talents can and, in my opinion, have to improve or change the animations of the spells they affect. The hero talents are clearly focused around specific class flavor and bringing that to the visual plane is almost a must. Since we don't have the alpha yet, they might have already planned this out, so this isn't as much of a criticism but mostly an enforcement of something we players have been asking for for a long time, at the very least since BFA Essences received an animation skin as a reward for an achievement. Class specs or spell skins are easy to sell cosmetic content for players. Metaphorically sell. Metaphorically sell, Blizzard! Look how people lined up for Mage Tower. Imagine giving everybody ways to change how their spells look in combat that goes hand in hand with a flavor to their spec in the form of hero talents. Easy money. Metaphorically, Blizzard, get your in-game shop in order. On an even more positive note, the devs are actually very open to feedback, and that is very respectable. The fact that they responded so quick with Oracle Priest gives some reassurance. The other hero talents need the same level of engagement, however, and publicly we haven't seen anything on it so far. Hopefully they will be readily available for the war within Alpha, so we can test them out and tell you all what is up. Meanwhile, the Alpha might come sooner than you think. Check our video about it right here and let's see if in the end they will have time to get all of this done.